In this lesson, we're going to take a more in-depth look at Maya's viewports. Earlier on, we showed you a brief introduction, single video, over how you could handle some basic navigation in these viewports, you know, get around your scene in a very simple manner. But seeing how it's going to be the viewports where you're going to spend pretty much all your time <laughs> when constructing 3D scenes inside of Maya, Indeed. it's a good idea to find out just a little bit more what they have to offer. And even if you don't use it all, at least you know it's there so that when the circumstance rolls around that you need it, you can get it. That's right. So we're going to start off in this video by taking a look at some of the more advanced methods you can use to navigate around the viewport. So for starters, you're already familiar with holding down the Alt key and left mouse dragging to tumble, okay. middle mouse dragging to pan, and right mouse dragging to dolly. And if you happen to be old school and used Maya in the past, the Alt, left, and middle mouse button still works for the dollying in and all out. All left, middle, no school like the old school, That's right. and all that. <laughs> I used to actually, uh, do, I know they, they switched up to using right mouse several versions ago. Yes, they did. But uh, And I never got into it. I always used uh, alt, left, and middle, and then I started motion using motion builder, builder yeah. where motion builder just supports right mouse, and that was it. Uh, after that, I only use right now. So uh, there's also another way that you can take a look at navigating using hotkeys, and that is also holding down the shift key along with your alt and your mouse button. Right. And what that's going to do is constrain your motion to a single axis, at least for the tumble and pan operations. And this can be very handy when you're needing to rotate around something and you don't want to change the plane that you're currently sitting on with your well, camera. Well, sure. Well, maybe you should bring in something to rotate around. Let me go ahead and grab, I don't know. I could... I, was gonna, I want a polygon. I don't okay. know why. I just really, <laughs> really want a polygon. So Fair enough. Here we go. Here's my polygon box. And uh, if I hold down Alt and I left mouse drag, yeah, of course, he's, 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 ro he's tumbling up, down. Yeah. He's not staying on a perfect axis around it. But if I hold down Alt, Shift, and then I hold down the left mouse button and drag left and right, look at this. Perfect. Stays right on the same plane. I can even move the mouse up and down like so, and you'll notice that I'm only staying on this one plane. That's right. So I've constrained my motion to that plane. And the way it works is once you hold that shift key down, of course, you've got all down. The first direction in which you move your mouse is going to be the direction you're going to get locked to. That's right. So there you go. You can also do this with middle mouse for panning. So I can hold down alt, shift, click and drag with the middle mouse. And now I am just panning to the left and to the right. Even though you see his mouse going up and down, that's irrelevant. I can uh, also move up and down if I want to. If the first motion that Maya detects is up and down, then that is the axis to which you will be constrained. Also, if you didn't know, you can use the mouse wheel these days to zoom in and out. Yay! I'm still not used to that. I mean, that's something I'm still trying to get into, because that hasn't been around very long. With other apps, it's been around forever. But with Maya, it's new. With new Maya, -er. it's new. Yes, new-er. Yes. New to me. <laughs> so uh, those are the, the main extra methods of navigation. Very, very handy, uh, really for demonstration purposes. I mean, when I'm uh, trying to show somebody my model and I need to do like a nice pan around, I can hold Alt-Shift and drag around it real quick right. and easy. But uh, to be honest, when I'm modeling, man, it's just the, the old-fashioned alt-left. Let's just around. do it. Yeah. yeah. Now, we have some other uh, navigation tools that are hidden away from us inside the view menu. So if you jump down to view inside your panel, like so, and come down to camera tools, you'll see we have a big, long list of these. Let me go ahead and rip off this menu so we can take a look at this. Each of those navigation operations that we just performed uh, with Alt-Left, Alt-Middle, and Alt-Right each have their own respective tools inside this menu so that you don't necessarily have to use a hotkey. If you want to actually activate a tool, such as the Tumble tool, now take a look at my cursor. It, uh, it is just a little tumble icon, and I'm not holding any uh, hotkeys down whatsoever. I'm just left dragging, and you I'm tumbling wonder, around. Where would something like this be useful? Well, let's say you had a laptop and you don't have a middle mouse button, and you needed to, <laughs> let's say, you know, track around a view or something, you could come in here and just grab the track tool and manipulate your viewport. That and way. somebody has run up next to you and cut the cable on your USB mouse that you faithfully keep with your laptop. Or let's just say you don't. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but the nice thing about these tools is they do come with options. Now, we're not going to get into all the options, but if you go ahead and open them up real quick, you'll notice that we have a tumble scale. So depending on the size of your scene and all, you can do some really nice things. Center of interest, or um, we've got the uh, tumble pivot as well. Some of you that like the old school tumble methods. Sure. And, uh, and then you can see here where we can control orthographic views if they're locked or not, which by default they're locked, and I suggest that you keep it that way. <laughs> There's nothing more frustrating than tumbling an orthographic view. But you have a 
view. It's a user type view. That <laughs> you don't looks, want to say it, do you? I know, but it, well, I'm just gonna say it. it's a user type. It's a view, user view, which uh, looks in a sense as if it has perspective. But it doesn't because it's still really nothing more than an orthogonal view, so yeah. it's still flat. Yeah. So that's doing nothing but screwing with your head. <laughs> yeah, there's another application that they're a very popular application. Yeah. And it's called the user view. That allows you to create user views, which are basically tumbled orthographic views. And yeah. I think I found one use for those. Okay. And that is uh, if you have uh, two vertices that are right on top of one another in an orthographic view, mm. you can rotate slightly so you can see them. Me, um, I've done some logo work in the past yeah. where, where that ended up being very helpful. Sure. Where it needed a two-dimensional look, but at the same time had to have kind a of little a little bit of a 3D thing. Yeah, but yeah. It, it could not have a true perspective on it. I understand. And so that worked out pretty good. But, you know, with beginners going into it and they start using the user view in that particular app, I used to call it the idiot view because <laughs> you're an idiot <laughs> if you use it and you're new to 3D. Sweet. Because you're... You're really not treating your brain nice. What that boils down to is leave this locked for now. Mm -hmm. Don't unlock it. So uh, down from here, we also have the track tool. And what this is going to do is just like holding down alt and middle mouse, except now I'm dragging with the left mouse button and no hotkeys mm -hmm. because I've activated an actual tool dedicated only to tracking around. Right. Also called panning. Uh, we also have the dolly tool, which, as you might expect, is going to dolly us in and out. Again, I'm just dragging with the left mouse button, no hotkeys involved whatsoever. And I have the zoom tool. Now, this is a little bit different than the dolly tool because this is actually zooming the camera in and out. The camera itself is not moving. Kind of Changing your focal length there. Changing my focal In fact, I can show that. This is kind of jumping ahead just a little bit, but I'll go ahead and select camera. And you'll notice down here my focal length attribute is adjusting as I zoom in and out. So what does that mean in plain English? Picture a camcorder in your hands. You've got the zoom button. You're zooming in. You're zooming out. A wide-angle shot. A, That's right. A close-up. The difference between dollying and zooming is very simple. If you have a camcorder in your hand and you hit the zoom button to get closer to your object, you are zooming. If you take the camcorder and you <laughs> run at whatever it is really, really quick, it'll get bigger and bigger. It'll and get bigger, bigger and bigger and bigger. But not because you're zooming. And then make sure, Bonk. yeah, close the eye that's not in the little eyepiece and, and run as fast as you can. <laughs> Straight into a wall. Bonk. So uh, You're that, just kidding. Don't yeah, do that. That is dollying. This is zooming. So let me set this back to the default of, I think, 35. I think that's about right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have a couple of other tools that are kind of specialized tools, which probably explains the divider bar, because you're not going to use these very often, if ever, right. really. But we have the roll tool, and it gives you this really cool, almost anchor-looking icon. Yeah, it does. Look like and it, yeah. uh, it, this allows you to roll the camera. So kind of banking, mm -hmm. like so. And uh, what this is really doing, for the most part, is uh, rotating your camera in its local z-axis, which, if you set that back to zero, we have... Now flown away from everything. Bye bye scene. <laughs> Goodbye scene. Uh, if you ever get lost like this, you can hit the default home, and that'll take you back to a, a the same view you get when you open up Maya. So uh, yeah, watch out for the roll tool. <laughs> we have the uh, azimuth az elevation tool. Azimuth, azimuth, azimuth elevation. Yeah. There we go. And uh, we can use this to well, it's a very interesting rotation algorithm. Well, it takes it takes a little bit of getting used to. Indeed. But basically you have the ability to control the elevation and the azimuth of your view. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. Well, actually there is something kind of interesting about this. If you open up the uh, the settings for it, we have rotation type, yaw pitch or azimuth elevation. Now watch this. Uh, if I take my settings and I crank them over, instead of the azimuth elevation tool, which is currently active, over to the yaw pitch tool, that's all that happens. <laughs> they just switch the little radio button for you. Right. So uh, now you're doing yaw and pitch, which is kind of like turning your head. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you look up, you look down, you look left, you look right, and yeah, you're you get lost. and you're pitching. You get lost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big fan, but it is kind of cool. So you also have the fly tool, and you can use the fly tool, hold down control, and left drag to kind of fly into kind your of scene. Like if you guys have ever worked in a game editor. Yeah, kind of. It is very similar. If you don't hold control and you drag around, it's it goes back to kind of the yaw pitch idea it where is, you're... It's like you're standing there looking around. Yeah. It is very jittery. It's very sensitive. Very, very tricky to get the hang of. But, I mean, it is here if you want to play with it and you can have some fun with it. 
So those are all of our extended navigation tools. Again, just to, to reiterate, and you can probably tell just by the way I was moving the screen around, most of what I always use is going to be alt and left, middle, right. right. Uh, I never really use the specialized tools for anything Don't at all. Don't forget, if you're using any of your navigation tools and you find yourself needing to you know, tumble around a particular item in your screen, don't forget that you can select that item and hit F to recenter up your interest, to frame that object up, and at that point you're now going to be rotating around that particular piece. That's right, and we're going to be covering uh, specialized commands like that in the next video under a few options. Sounds great. So let's go ahead and call it here. Thanks a lot, everyone.